What is going on wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfect Schnellus where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my cardiology playlist. In previous videos we talked about angina and myocardial infarction, rheumatic fever and infective endocarditis, myocarditis and pericarditis, pericardial effusion and cardiac tamponade, congestive heart failure and broken heart syndrome, systemic hypertension and pulmonary hypertension, cyanotic congenital heart diseases and acyanotic cyanotic congenital heart diseases, as well as the cardiac arrhythmias. Then we started a new series on the valvular heart diseases. We talked about aortic stenosis, aortic regurg, mitral stenosis and mitral regurg, tricuspid stenosis and tricuspid regurg, pulmonic stenosis, and today we're talking about pulmonic regurgitation, also known as pulmonic insufficiency otherwise known as pulmonic incompetence just like many of your professors click the like button click the subscribe button and let's get started this is my cardiology playlist it has cardiac anatomy physiology pharmacology and pathology as you know that we have four chambers in the heart we have left atrium we have left ventricle we have right atrium and right ventricle the left ventricle is connected to the aorta whereas the right ventricle is connected to the pulmonary trunk and then the pulmonary trunk divides into right pulmonary artery for the right lung and left pulmonary artery for the left lung if you wish to see more videos like this in the future drop a heart emoji in the comments so the pulmonary trunk gives us right and left pulmonary arteries, but the aorta is gonna give us the two coronary arteries from the ascending aorta. We have right coronary artery and left coronary artery. Then the aortic artery is gonna give us the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionatus.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. The heart has four valves as you know, mitral valve, tricuspid valve, aortic valve, and the pulmonic valve. The mitral valve is between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Tricuspid lies between the right atrium and the right ventricle. The aortic valve is between the left ventricle and the aorta, whereas the pulmonic valve is between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. If you want more medicosis anatomy in your life, check out my anatomy playlist on YouTube. I have review videos for anatomy of the head and neck, upper extremities, lower extremities, anatomy of the thorax, the abdomen, the pelvis and perineum, neuroanatomy, and even embryology. Each one of these anatomy topics is covered in three videos. For example, anatomy of the thorax, there is part one called quick review, part two, ultimate review, and part three, clinically oriented anatomy of the thorax. Since you're heart has four valves each one of these valves can have stenosis or regurgitation stenosis is difficulty at opening whereas regurgitation is difficulty at closing today we're talking about pulmonic regurgitation which is difficulty at closing normally the pulmonic valve should close during ventricular diastole to prevent the back flow of blood from the pulmonary arteries back to the right ventricle so you need to close the pulmonic valve during diastole. This is normal. But if my pulmonic valve fails to close during diastole, then the blood will backflow from the pulmonary artery back to the right ventricle. And since this happens during diastole, therefore pulmonic regurgitation is a diastolic murmur. So in pulmonic regurgitation, we have failure of closure of the pulmonic valve leading to a backflow of the blood from the pulmonary trunk to the right ventricle. This is going to overwhelm the right ventricle with blood. This volume overload is going to cause dilation of the right ventricle as well as eccentric hypertrophy of the right ventricle. So we have dilation and right ventricular hypertrophy. What kind of hypertrophy? Is it concentric or eccentric? It is eccentric thanks to the volume overload. Because there is volume overload, we expect to hear S3 gallop rhythm. Blood is going to overwhelm the right ventricle, then it's going to overwhelm the right atrium, and then it will overwhelm the superior vena cava, and thereby the jugular veins. Also, I'm going to overwhelm the inferior vena cava, therefore I'm going to overwhelm the liver, causing hepatomegaly, distension of the hepatic capsule of glycine which is going to be painful and then ascites and then splenomegaly 
Moreover, this increase of blood in the inferior vena cava, this congestion is going to lead to edema in the lower extremities, both of them, the right and the left legs. Notice that these symptoms are very similar to the symptoms of right-sided heart failure, where I have swelling upstairs, swelling downstairs, and swelling in the middle. What is upstairs? Jugular venous distension. And what is downstairs? bilateral pitting edema and what is in the middle hepatomegaly and ascites medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the french toast you're talking about pulmonic regurgitation is failure of closure of the pulmonic valve normally the pulmonic valve is supposed to close during diastole therefore pulmonic regurgitation is a diastolic murmur it is similar to the murmur of aortic regurgitation, meaning it's diastolic decrescendo murmur. Where do we hear the murmur of pulmonic regurg? Usually in the left third intercostal space near the left sternal border. Could be slightly above it, slightly below it, but it's in this area. Because this area lies beneath the pulmonary valve. So therefore when blood back flows like this, you're going to hear it here. In the second aortic area. You know that the murmur of aortic stenosis is systolic. Therefore, if you just change one letter, change that stenosis into regurgitation, you flip the systole into diastole. So if aortic regurgitation is a diastolic murmur, and since the pulmonic valve is equivalent to the aortic valve, because both of them are semi-lunar valves, therefore, since aortic regurg is diastolic, pulmonic regurg is going to be diastolic as well. The murmur of aortic regurg is similar to the murmur of pulmonic regurg. Both of them are diastolic decrescendo murmur. And of course, diastolic murmurs start after S2. Here is everything you need to know about pulmonic regurgitation in one slide. What causes pulmonic regurgitation? Could be from rheumatic fever, could be infective endocarditis, could be congenital, could be after cardiomyopathy or pulmonary hypertension. Symptoms include palpitation or racing heartbeats, in addition to the symptoms of right-sided heart failure, something upstairs, jugular venous distension, something downstairs, edema in the lower extremities and discomfort in the legs, and something in the middle, the hepatomegaly, which can be painful, ascites, and even splenomegaly. The patient is literally full of water. This is called extracellular fluid volume overload. Can this lead to increased body weight? The answer is yes. When the entire body is swollen, this is called anasarca. On physical examination, expect diastolic decrescendo murmur at the left second or third intercostal space. Sometimes the murmur is accompanied by a palpable thrill at the same location. Thanks to the regurgitation, we have volume overload and this creates an S3 gallop. It also creates dilation and eccentric hypertrophy of the right ventricle, which can give us a palpable parasternal heave or lift, which you can feel at the parasternal border. How can we diagnose pulmonic regurgitation? We do so clinically, and there is a rule that says, anytime you hear a murmur with your stethoscope, the next step is to do an echo, preferably with Doppler, to look at the flow. In this case, it's backflow from the pulmonary trunk to the right ventricle. EKG will show you signs of right ventricular enlargement, chest x-ray, right ventricular enlargement, which causes cardiomegaly. Cardiac catheterization might help. How can we treat pulmonic regurgitation? If it's mild and asymptomatic, no treatment. If it is symptomatic, we have non-pharmacological options such as decreased salt intake, decreased competitive sport, and if there is risk of endocarditis, give antibiotics prophylaxis. If we have signs of right-sided heart failure, diuretics might help. Surgical options include to repair the pulmonic valve or to throw it in the trash and replace it with a new one. Anytime you replace a heart valve, you have two options. You can replace it with a tissue valve known as bioprosthesis or you can replace it with a metallic valve known as mechanical prosthesis. To learn more about diuretics, digoxins, antihypertensives, antiarrhythmics, the antihyperlipidemics, and antianginal medications, download my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionaries.com. To learn about angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, ARDS, 
acute limb ischemia, cardiac arrhythmias, and more, download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionaries.com. It comes with videos, notes, and cases. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.